on two wheels this week. Claire looks at the way motorcycle clothing has changed over the years. I'm in Italy to ride Piaggio's new X9 scooter. Jeff takes a ride on Aprilia's latest twin, the Falco. And Richard Fines meets an ex-racer who's now making motorcycle clothing. Now, motorcycle clothing and accessories obviously exist for practical and safety purposes, but fashion is becoming increasingly more important for the stylish motorist. The equivalent of, say, Hugo Boss and Armani is slowly creeping into the market. Now, back in the 70s, if you wanted a one-piece suit for your bike, you'd have had to have something like that, specially made. There you go. Handmade by Reg Cross there in Lincolnshire. Now, nowadays, obviously, you can walk into any modern-day clothing department and look like one of the super bike riders by buying a set of leathers off the peg. Now, some of the top-of-the-range leathers come in some really funky colours. I mean, take a look at some of these. You've got red, purple, orange, silver, and here we have the pièce de résistance gold. Really, for the style conscious amongst us, you're certainly going to get noticed in something like that, aren't you? Quite expensive there as well, around £700. Now, to finish the look, is this going a bit over the top? The chrome boots? Well, I'm not so sure about that, but uh, they're made for comfort and durability with that vertebrae back on there. But a uh, whole lot, just under £900. Style comes at a price. Now, first glance at something like that, you might wonder, what on earth it is. It is, in fact, a 1952 Everoak pudding basin helmet. Now, something like that is not going to offer too much protection, is it? Back in those days, something like that will have only set you back about £5. Slightly more expensive for the modern-day equivalent. One of the top-of-the-range showies, for instance, will set you back about £390. You can spend anything up to £500 these days. It's aerodynamic, it's got a complex ventilation system, it's quiet, and it's also very practical. It's got a detachable, washable lining. And it's also rather funky. Now, obviously, gloves have come a long way in quite a few years as well. Look at that. Doesn't it look uncomfortable? There's no protection. Not like this one. Look at that. State-of-the-art technology. Italian designer chic. It's incredibly comfortable. Really good quality leather. Loads of protection, but look at that. It does come at a price, doesn't it? £100. OK, so I've got my Carl Fogarty glasses, I've got my watch, I've got my keyring, I've got my visor, I've got my pants, I've got my purse, I've got my T-shirt, I've got my baseball cap, I've got my fleece. All I need now is my moped. Buongiorno, come stai? Spaghetti bolognese and all that stuff. That's about the extent of my Italian. But this is Italy, and what would you expect to see loads and loads of here in Italy? No, 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 not them. Well, yes, you do see lots of nice ladies in Italy. Where did we get this cameraman from? But you also see lots of these because Italy is the scooter capital of the world. And we've come here especially to ride this brand new machine from Piaggio, the 250cc X9. This new model sees Piaggio's entry into the large maxi scooter market. It's aimed at the rider with the need to cover longer distances, whilst retaining the ability to be manoeuvrable and easy to ride in busy town traffic. Being a single cylinder four stroke engine, it does take a few seconds to wind itself up. It certainly doesn't feel quite as quick off the mark as some of the smaller capacity two stroke scooters. That said, it can still reach a top speed of 75 miles an hour, and the 14.5 litre fuel tank will take you close to 300 miles, reinforcing the idea that this machine is capable of much more than just nipping down to the local coffee shop. Taking the X9 through these twisty Italian roads was easy, and more importantly, very, very comfortable. The wide floor area allows you to ride feet forward in true cruising style. So let's have a closer look at the X9, the scooter that thinks it's a motorbike, because I think it looks a bit like a motorbike. Very uh, sports bike, isn't it, that front end? Big pointed thing there with twin lamps. And let me show you this, watch this. Turn the key on, put the side lights on. Look at that, up there in the corners. 
What's that? It's an R6, isn't it? Supersonic sports bike, like an R6. Very, very smart. Very funky front end. Big screen, big floppy screen. Look at that. Very bendy. That's so you can do Rolf Harris impressions if you're stopped and bored at the traffic lights. Like that. You know what I mean, don't you? Wing mirrors, great big wing mirrors, massive wing mirrors. Stick out a long way, but you can see everything that's behind. Very, very useful, especially when you're riding around Italy because uh, they don't give you a lot of room in Italy, I have to say. And then come and have a look at this funky dashboard. Look at all them lights, like a rocket ship. Look at that. It's a scooter, remember this. Everything on there, and the clock as well. 8.32 a.m. a.m. That's morning, and this is me alive in the morning, yes. And then if you push the key in, this big glove box opens here. You get a couple of bits and pieces in there. There's another compartment up there for putting your sunglasses in or your driving license or whatever. A uh, couple of switches here. That one does that and opens that, which is where your gasoline goes, as it says. This other one releases the seat. Just watch this. Look at that cavernous, cavernous big hole there under the seat. Plenty of room for a full face helmet and loads of other room as well. And in here, there's a courtesy light in there, which is very ponty. And there's a, a power supply there, cigarette lighter type socket there. So you can plug your laptop in or charge your mobile phone up or whatever you want to do. This is very useful down here. Toolkits there. This is a rain cover, which goes under the front of the seat, pulls over it and stops you getting a wet bum. And uh, I think that's a great idea. Very, very useful as well, especially if you live where I do, in the rainy city in Manchester. Um, but nice big boot compartment there. And a big comfy seat as well. We've been riding this two up, up the hills and round the towns and it's no problem at all. It pulls well and still handles pretty well as well with another person on the back. Big chunky grab rails and a lovely big curved back end, eh? Look at that, just how I like them. Now there's an old saying about when in Rome. So I thought I'd try riding Italian style, helmetless. Only at very low speed and not on the main road, you understand. Now I should point out that this is highly dangerous and not recommended unless you actually want a hairstyle straight out of a 1970s Bee Gees film. This machine actually has three disc brakes. The squeezing on the right hand front brake lever will operate just the right hand front caliper. Although I have to say that this alone really didn't have a great deal of bite. For any decent stopping power you really must use both brake levers together the left hand lever operating the rear brake and the remaining left hand front. You know, I suppose the ultimate test for any new scooter to see whether it works or whether it looks right is to bring it here to Italy because they've seen them all here in Italy. Every type of scooter you can ever think of, even some wacky things like that thing there behind me. What earth that is, I don't know. But this has attracted a, quite a bit of attention. It turned a few heads here in Italy, especially those football referees who blow the whistles in the traffic, the ones that stand in the road with the policeman's helmets on. It's attracted their attention. He's been pointing at me and blowing his whistle at me all day long. I think they like it myself. But it is Smart looking thing, as I say, I think it looks very motorbikey rather than scootery. Very comfy, easy to ride, very, very user friendly. Rev and go, great in traffic. I mean, if you can drive it round here, you can drive it round the M25. The M25 has got nothing on this place, believe me. And I think if I only ever went to work and back on my machine, I think I'd have one of these. No problem at all. Just storage space, comfort, as I say, everything you need, and good economy as well. Cheaper insurance than a motorbike as well. But Maybe you're not so much interested in what I think. Perhaps you'd like to see what the ladies think. So come back and join me a little bit later and I'll give you the bird's eye view on the new X9. Nice to meet you at last. At last. I'm glad you got my nine-page fax in the end. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't miss it. <laughs> Tell me, how long have you been here? Six years in mm. September. Yeah. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. And what instigated the shop in the first place? Well, I've al always used motorbikes as a way of getting around town. I mean, mm -hmm. when I'm not racing them, I'm using them to get around town because I can't stand driving in town. Mm. Like, it's seriously ratty. 
And, so and bicycles. Bicycles. Just mo not. Mainly, so. well, bicycles, you get kind of hot and sweaty. So yeah. You quite cut it. Yeah. So a motorbike is just a quick way, effortless way of getting around town. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't really like wearing sort of, you know, motorbike clothes as they were available in the market at that stage. So mm. I thought I'll just sort of design some of my own. This bike you've got outside, do you want to tell us a little bit about this? Yeah, I could tell you a lot about that. That is um, an Eric Cheney Triumph. Right. Eric Cheney is one of Britain's most famous off-road frame builders, mm -hmm. a man... Um, God. A god In, yeah. of the frame building world. Yes. He still builds frames. The man is, is just a superhero with his son, Simon. Mm -hmm. And um, he's always just concentrated on building the lightest, most functional, and therefore the most beautiful mm. creation mm. known to, to the motorcycling world. Lightness is a big priority. Performance mm. is a top priority. And right. a part of performance is lightness, mm. protection, mm. weather protection, yes, of course. maintenance, yep. um, durability, and comfort. Yep. comfort they're all factors yeah. in that, all very important. Mm -hmm. um, famous riders include people like Steve McQueen. Steve McQueen used to actually really? stay with Eric when he was in town. He used to stay at Eric's house in Aldershot rather My than all the, the, the fuss in, uh, yeah. in London. Yeah. And, you know, the real, real soulmates. Yeah. Bud Eakins, another mm -hmm. big... Bud Eakins was the stunt rider that actually did the, the great escape. Oh, uh, yep. Malcolm Smith. I mean, like, yeah. reams and reams of people. And it's just a it's just a beautiful British bike. Good thing about um, a skid lid is that they're very compact, very light. And then you know the other clothes are sort of designed to go with this. To complement. Yeah, to yeah. complement this. So this is a kind of you know basis. This is the sort of starting point. Excellent. Of, uh, Excellent. Of the, and is that is that um, a patty copy, the cork lined, yeah, like this the is, old Sterling Moss racing? Yeah, this is helmet. cork lined. Yep. Cork and leather. Yep. Um, about as much protection as a as a carved out spud, but <laughs> it's light and um, you know it doesn't get in the way. You can carry yeah. if you, you know, yeah going into a pub carry it as, as yeah. a spare. Yeah, you can get rid of it. Yeah. Or you, if you if you want to carry a spare one, you can yeah. keep it stored in a backpack and pull it out. And, mm -hmm. and, and the goggles have you designed? The goggles are just old retro goggles that that have always been made by the manufacturer. Mm. On the accessories side. Accessories are difficult to get made in small batches, so I buy all my accessories in. And I mean, how could I improve on a pair of goggles mm. like that? They're the original, these are the original type of goggles that were developed for motoring years ago. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to come and try and redesign no. them. They're perfect. Mm. They've been evolved over many yeah. years. And coming up after the break, Jeff rides the Aprilia Falco, and as promised, the lady biker's view on Piaggio's new scooter. Bikes are going through a funny stage in the old styling stakes at the moment. Especially with these sort of half airings. They're neither one thing or the other really, are they? They're not a sports tourer, they're not an out and out sports bike. They're a sort of an in-betweeny. Eh? We've got the Sprint RS, we've got the Firestorm, the TL1000, and now we've got this, the Aprilia SL1000 Falco. It's an all-new bike, but uses an engine based on the highly regarded RSV Melee. It feels very much like the RSV, being pretty tall at 815 mil in the old seat department, but really is very, very different. First, the engine. Borrowed from the RSV Melee, it's that narrow angle 60 degree twin, as against the Firestorm, which is a 90 degree, and the TL1000, all those are 90 degree, and Ducati, of course. But this is a narrow angle, so it's not as inherently smooth as a 90 degree, so they fitted a couple of balancer shafts, one down in the crankcase, one at the rear of the cylinder head, and that evens out the firing impulses and makes it a very smooth motor. But the big difference is they've locked 10 brake horsepower off the top end by remapping the ignition and the fuel injection to give a wider spread of power low down. You still get 112 brake horsepower though, and you can really feel it. Crack open the throttle and the front wheel lifts. But as regulars will know, I like my engines with a bit of character, and this one's got loads. 
a sort of Pavarotti on speed with loads of punch from anywhere you care to nail it, but equally talky enough to pobble along in touring mode. The gearbox is slick with well chosen ratios and blasting into 10,500 revs will see you doing 157 miles an hour and probably losing your license to boot, so it's no slow. Handling too is as sweet as the proverbial nut. And that sweet handling is due in no small part to this new frame. Twin tube as against the big spars of the RSV, welded here onto these big castings for the swinging arm. And the swinging arm, as you can see, it's not as fancy as the RSV, it's very nicely done, all finished off in anodized aluminium. In there, single shock, as you can see, easily adjustable for preload on those two rings there, and it's all go also got compression and rebound damping. But just look at this up the front here. We don't normally talk about headlights a lot, but that one's absolutely fantastic. We'll just switch it on and demonstrate this. Look at that. You can't see too well in this light, of course, but it really is good at night. Absolutely brilliant. And this little fairing here, I say little, is pretty substantial. It doesn't get any lowers, but it really does give you good protection. Just as well, because at this time of year, it's very effective at keeping the old wind chill factor at bay, and this allows you to still enjoy the handling. It's firm but compliant suspension and a low weight of 190 kilos, coupled to a shortish wheelbase, gives that sports bike feel, but with a bit of comfort thrown in. Or perhaps thrown in is the wrong word, because I've actually given some thought to this. The clutch lever is adjustable, as is the brake, fully adjustable for span, the front forks are fully adjustable, just like the rear. They're adjustable for preload, compression and rebound damping. And as you can see, they're upside downers. Down there also, you've got your 320mm disc, which has become pretty standard these days with the old Brembo calipers. Coming back up the front, nice instrument layout here. It looks a bit sort of plasticky, but it does the business. Just look at this. Switch on, the old rev counter goes round just to scan and recalibrate. A nice hefty digital speedo there, nice big digit so you can keep well within the speed limit officer. And over there you can see it flashing cold because it is at the moment, but uh, you've also got the clock in there and all your trip recorders. And actually while I'm up here, let me just mention these mirrors because it makes a pleasant change on a sports bike these days to actually be able to see what's behind you. Very useful. Also something else here, plastic petrol tank. Beautiful finish on this. You can't put a magnetic tank bag on there, of course, but nevertheless, a nice tank. And again, the same as the RSV. The seat, while I'm at it, got a pillion perch here. It's, in fact, separate. A little key there, you can take the top off and just put your waterproofs underneath. But as you can see, it's got grab rails there for your pillion passenger, so you're not going to lose them. And something else it's also got, which other bikes are missing, got little bungee hooks there, so you can strap your luggage on the back there without losing it. So there we have the Falco closer to a firestorming character than a Sprint RS, while shorter and lighter than either of them. On the other hand, it's taller and at £7,474, more expensive than either of them too. If you like a bike with character though, you'll certainly like the Falco. But like so many bikes today, the choice is a personal one. Half fairings or not, it ain't half difficult. Welcome back to El Malfi here in Italy. It's going dark and a bit cool now. So as promised, the bird's eye view on Piaggio's new X9 scooter. And here's the biker bird, Emma. You don't mind me calling you that, do you? No, not at all. You'd rather me call you Fluffy, wouldn't you? Yeah, not? Fluffy, please. Fluffy's your nickname, I won't ask why. Right, so <laughs> Lady Biker on a yeah. scooter. What, yeah. what do you think of this then? Um, I really liked it. I'm obviously not used to riding a scooter. I'm more of a, a sort of a sports bike person. Super bike person, aren't you? Yes. Well, what do you normally ride then? Firestorm. Right. And what's your Firestorm <laughs> called? He's called George. <laughs> Firestorm with Gold George, right, okay. Um, I thought it was quite handy up the hills, it just got a bit of pull, so it's not like you feel you're lagging when you're going up hills trying to follow you, which was good fun. <laughs> um, I really like the bike, it's got nice little pockets here, you can put your sunglasses in it or your lipstick or whatever. All your girly bits. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Big hole under the seat there yeah, as well. You can fit your lid in there, yeah. which is handy for when you go shopping. It? Yeah. yeah, it's good. So you wouldn't um, 
Would you consider one of these then? I would. If I was just poodling back to work and, you know, coming back a few miles every day, yeah, I'd have one of these. Right. But not for going to blast the weekends with the lads? Not for going to scratch and getting my knee down. You're right. a knee down oh. merchant, I am you? indeed, hey, yeah. You're a knee down merchant, right, OK. So uh, you wouldn't swap this for your Firestorm at the moment? No, not in your life, sweetie. Right, not in your life, sweetie, right. Do you fancy one last blast then before we go? Yeah, let's... What, what about Rome, I was thinking, maybe? No, I fancy shopping in Milan, really. Oh, do you? Yeah. Right. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll go for Milan. All right. Milan at night, that'd be nice. It would be nice. On one condition, that I can lead the way. Why is that, then? Because, remember, Fluffy, in Italy, <laughs> they drive on the right-hand side of the road. Yeah, OK. And we'll say no more about that. <laughs> And I promised I wouldn't mention it. Oh well. You know, we didn't actually make it to Rome or Milan, but we did cover many miles on the new X9. You can expect to see this new model arriving in the showrooms in about six weeks' time. It'll be available in seven different colour schemes, and there's a whole host of optional extras available, which include an automatic sensor stand, which is switch-operated from the handlebars. There's also heated handlebars. There's a huge 45 litre rear top box. And would you believe an extra large windscreen for use on longer trips? It's 300 millimetres higher than the standard screen. There's also a range of clothing, including jackets and helmets, all designed to complement the X9. It's expected to cost £3,699, which is cheaper than both Yamaha and Honda's 250 scooters, the Majesty and the Foresight and it's a touch less than Suzuki's 250 Bergman. It's still a scooter, but it doesn't half look like a motorbike. On two wheels next week, Jeff goes trackside with Honda as they test out the new VTR SP1.